Hi students, Ms. Bird here. Today we're going to be answering the question, who were the first humans? This is going to be an extremely brief and quick summary of the history of the evolution of man. So before we really get started, I've got to clear one thing up. Humans and dinosaurs living together at the same time. While it might seem kind of exciting for a cave person, that did not happen. No way. Humans and dinosaurs never lived at the same time. Dinosaurs died off about 65 million years ago. The first humans didn't start to show up until about three and a half million years ago. So that's a pretty big gap. There's no way. Sorry, Flintstones. Sorry, Jurassic Park. Okay, now we can really dive into what we're doing here today. So the first human-like animals, oh, sorry, about three million years ago, when the first human-like animals started appearing on Earth, there were a lot of animals around that are similar to ones we have today, like giraffes and hyenas and elephants and sheep and goats and deer. There were also some animals that we don't have around anymore, like the saber-toothed tiger and the cave lion. And during this time, three million years ago, we have the first human-like creature, the hominids. And they were much smaller than us, about four feet tall, they had smaller brains than we do, but they were significantly different from other ape animals because they could walk on two feet and their hands were shaped differently. They weren't shaped for climbing trees like an apes would be. They were shaped in a way that they could use and maybe even make tools. We don't know if hominids did, but their bone structure was such that they could have. Okay, pause for a moment and take some notes about hominids. All right, next up we have the Stone Age, thus called because the next kind of man or human creature that we had um, used and made tools out of stone. Um, this was about 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago, and these humans were certainly living in Africa. Um, these types of humans, or human-like animals, I should say, is called the Homo habilis. They, however, could not make fire. Oh, here are some of his Stone Age tools. But they couldn't make fire. Every once in a while they'd happen upon fire if lightning struck or something like that. But they couldn't make it themselves. So if they did just happen upon it in the wild, they would try and keep it going as long as they could because they didn't, if it went out, they didn't know how to make it again. Okay, so pause for a moment, take a few notes about the Stone Age and Homo habilis. Next up we have Homo erectus. This was another 200,000 years later after Homo habilis. And Homo erectus was about the same size as humans, but their brains were about two-thirds the size of ours. They were a lot better at making tools than their previous ancestors. They had axes and knives, very primitive of course, of course. And he was probably the first hunter. Most importantly about the Homo erectus, they learned to make fire, which of course would drastically change your way of life. Why is the ability to make fire so important for humankind, human ancestors? Think about that and jot down a few ideas. Pause and also take notes on Homo erectus. Next up we have Homo sapiens. These were very similar creatures to the human animals that we are today. Um, their brains were actually bigger than ours, but they weren't as smart as us. Um, they were uh, taller than previous human animals, um, had larger bone structures, very similar to about the size we are today. And one of these, the kind of homo sapiens is Neanderthals, if you've heard of these. Um, we discovered the skeleton of a Neanderthal, archaeologists did, and that's how we know so much about Homo sapiens. Here's a Neanderthal. You can see their skulls are a lot bigger than ours. 
pause for a moment and take a few notes. And lastly, we have the Homo sapiens sapiens, which is what we are. Um, these uh, humans were the first humans on Earth, and they came out of Africa, and they were hunters and gatherers, and, you know, they didn't live in one place at a time. They probably traveled around in search of food, and because they were searching for food, they traveled to other continents and started to walk outside of Africa in order to survive. Okay, that is all for today. See you next time.